So let me say a few words about choosing your sewing machine. The important thing that you do is you find a sewing machine, not necessarily with lots of bells and whistles. You can see we only need a few simple stitches in order to sew a bra or other lingerie, and actually for almost all garment sewing and all clothing sewing. It doesn't need to be fancy. What it does need to be is reliable, and it needs to be strong. A lot of times you can go out to Amazon or to Walmart and pick up an inexpensive machine. And that is certainly an option, but that's not the one that I recommend. This is an investment that you're going to make and you want a tool that really is going to serve you. And you're not gonna to have to worry about your machine and instead your machine is going to help you get a great result. So go to your local sewing shop. Here in our town, it's called Art of the Sewing Shop. They carry Janome sewing machines. You can go and you can buy one off of Amazon or at a discount place, and they're not going to be the same machine as the ones that you'll get in your local sewing uh, machine dealer. Um, they're going to have lesser quality materials or have other things that'll make your life just kind of tricky. And you're trying to do one thing well, which is to learn how to sew. If you're on a budget, I recommend that you go to that local sewing place and you ask them for what's a good machine, a good starter machine that you can use for this. Um, and they might even guide you to a used machine that will be a better choice for you than a brand new discount machine from Walmart or from uh, Joanne Fabrics or that sort of thing. These all will work okay, but I think that you'll be better off and better served if you use the sewing machine services from your local place. So that's my advice for you on that. Let's take a tour of the sewing machine. So this is my machine, the one that I use most of the time. And the one that you get is very likely not to be this one. So um, I'm going to show you some things that are more generic than they are specific. And you'll have to find out from your sewing machine dealer or a friend or something like that what the specifics are with your particular machine. So this machine works great for lingerie, but you don't need a lot of the features that uh, this one has. Every machine will have a place to put the thread. And on this machine, that's back there. And we have two thread spools. And then this little guy here is called a thread cap. And you can put that on the top of your thread spool. And that keeps the thread from being caught in the spool mechanisms itself. And then generally you do some sort of a guide here that will um, help the thread to come off of the thread spool. And now here's a guide that's going to take it down to the top of the machine. From there it's going to go you can see there's even a little arrow. It goes into this little guide, and then it comes over this way. You can see the arrows, and it goes through this guide. So there's usually a bunch of guides to get the thread into the spot that it actually does the work. So now then the thread's gonna come down here, and it's gonna go through this little roundy do here. And this is the tension. And um, in general, you can see that it says this is kind of where you want the ch tension. Uh, you don't want to mess a lot with that. It, sometimes you have to, a lot of machines have an automatic tension. So that's what this one does. This one has an automatic tension, but you can also manually um, adjust the tension, which I do occasionally, but not often. So then I'm going to bring my thread down this way underneath through, there's some little rings behind there. Let's see if you can see them. So there's little rings back there, and they go there, and then they go into this guy right here. There's a little, little lever here that goes up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. And that's how the machine takes the thread from the thread spool and feeds it to the needle. This one has just a little place where you can pull the thread back behind and it'll automatically go into place. And then the thread comes down here. There's usually a couple of little guides right by the needle. You can see here's a little guide to get it in. And there's a little guide for the needle. And then here's the needle itself. And then you thread it into the needle. 
Now let's talk about some of the different parts of the machine. So um, in general, you've got a place where the thread sits, which is back there. You've got um, a place where you can wind the bobbin. And on this machine, the bobbin is wound there. The bobbin, see that little spool of thread there inside of the machine? It looks a little bit purple here. That's called the bobbin. And if you see a stitch, you'll see that the thread is on the bottom and the top of the fabric. Thread gets to the bottom of the fabric from here. And it gets from the to the top of the fabric through the needle. And you have to thread that. You usually take your main thread and um, and thread your bobbin with the, the same color you have. That you can get pre-wound bobbins. So these are pre-wound bobbins and you don't have to wind them. And these are just like a regular polyester, kind of an off-white. So that's nice for when you just wanna do a whole lot of stuff at once and you don't wanna be re-threading your bobbin or rewinding your bobbin all the time. You're gonna have a little place where you can select the different kind of stitches you want. And this is the way this machine has it. They are all just a little bit different. The ones that you're most interested in are this, which is our stitch number one. And that is just a regular straight stitch. This machine allows the straight stitch to be scooched over to the far left side. And this one gives you a back stitch, which is a forward and backward, means that the stitching won't come undone at the front and the end of your seam. Uh, the one that you really want to make sure you have is a straight stitch. And then here, number eight, this is a zigzag stitch. Uh, the needle will go into the fabric here, scooch over, scooch over, scooch over, scooch over, scooch over, scooch over, scooch over. And it goes in and out of the, the fabric in a zigzag pattern. And then you also will want this one, which is called a three-step zigzag. So we're going to talk about the three-step zigzag here. So it makes three little stitches in one direction and then three little stitches in the other. Very elastic and also very stable and secure and strong. This machine has some things that won't be on other machines. For example, this is the way it will allow you to make your zigzag stitch bigger and smaller. And this is how it lets you make your regular stitch bigger and smaller. For every machine, this is going to be just a little bit different. You probably don't need to pay attention to any of those other things. Other than this one right here, we've talked about the bobbin. This is the little button to wind the bobbin. And so you'll want to figure out what that is for your machine too. Other things about the machine. This machine has a place up here at top that you can um, adjust how strong the foot pressure is and it tells you how strong that is right there. So I have left my house and I'm here at the local sewing machine shop so that I can show you some other machines and how they would work. So on this one you can see here's all the different stitches that are offered and you can see we've got that three-step zigzag and the regular zigzag that we want. Right here you're going to set how wide you want your zigzag to be and how long or short you want your stitch to be. The thread on this one is actually hiding down in there and so you're going to start it here and you're, you can see your thread guides on this one. It's a similar kind of a path, right? Back and forth, goes down here. You have little thread guides there coming to the feet. There's your presser foot again, the needle, the way you get the needle in and out, it's all quite consistent on that. This is the way you make it go back and forth. If we go to the next machine, you can see here's another one. Here now, the thread sits right here up on top. You've got your bobbin winding happens here. By the way, let's pop it back over here and look and see. And here's your bobbin winding inside the top of that guy. If you look at this one, as a, compared to this one, what you'll notice is that you can't see the bobbin, and that's because the bobbin is underneath. This machine here is probably going to be less expensive, but more difficult to use. And I think that that's an important thing to know, is that you make trade-offs. Sometimes getting the cheapest machine is not the best thing. So go off to your local sewing machine shop and see if they can help you make a decision that's right for you. Back to this. Here's your stitch width and the stitch length. 
This is the different stitches that you can select. And here are the different stitches here. So if I want my three step six zigzag, that's a D. And so I come up here and set this to the D. This is a more complicated machine, more similar to the one I showed you at home. Um, your thread spool is back here. Again, you got your thread guides, goes down, up, back down. Same thing, needle, presser foot, feed dogs. Bobbin drops in right there. Here are your different stitches that you can select, and you're going to be um, changing their settings and whatnot here. This has a speed control, which is really nice for a beginner. This gets your needle up and down, cuts it. Here's another machine. The thread is back here. Here's the way that you would wind the bobbin. It's gonna, you've got a thread path that comes up, down, back into the needle. And then here are the different stitches it does. And so you're gonna be looking here to say what is the stitch that I want and then it'll allow me to adjust it. So that is just a very small overview of the different kinds of machines and how they work.